Hey folks, how we doing? This is Chris Desi, CEO of Silverback Social and founder of the Westchester Digital Summit here with Josh Berger of Norman Baubro. There you go. Got it right. You got it right. You nailed it. Yes. <laughs> Real estate, who's a, a friend of mine and a friend of the Westchester Digital Summit for two years now um, because you're successful, you're forward thinking, and you're killing it in real estate. And you guys have done something really unique um, by virtue of putting together uh, a cool infographic that I wanted to like pull you aside and talk to you a little bit about that. Sure. And maybe give me your thought process, mm -hmm. why you felt like it would be compelling, mm -hmm. and what have the results been from the content that you guys produced? Sure, sure. So, you know, essentially we, we find that, that a lot of companies tend to overreach when it comes to real estate. There's mm -hmm. this fallacy that, that space is what draws the talent. Uh, and what we do is we help companies that are growing and we advise them on what's the best strategy. Uh, oftentimes people say, I'm starting a company, I need to get office space. Um, which would I mean it makes sense. There's, yeah. there's some logic there. Yeah. Um, but the challenge is, and, and, and unless you have real, real revenue to support that, you end up just flushing money down the toilet. Um, so, you know, I basically broke it down into a four phase approach uh, as companies are growing. The first phase, most importantly, work from home, work for free. You know, it's where I started. It's, it's where yeah. a lot of people start. You know, you start in a garage, you start in your basement, wherever it may be. Um, it keeps your overhead low, and you can you can focus all your efforts on, on running your company and not on you know that massive rent bill. You know, the second most expensive thing on someone's bottom line after their employees is their rent. Uh, so that was that's really phase one. Phase two kind of comes in when you're you're growing, you have a few employees, and you want to be in an environment that fosters creativity. That's where you go into a shared space environment. You go to a WeWork, you go to a Regis, you go to something like that where these places can really provide all the services that you need and you don't have to worry about any of the overhead. You don't have to worry about your secretary. You don't have to worry about who's filling the coffee machine, things like that. The problem with that though is that on a price per square foot basis, it is exorbitant. Mm. You're looking at probably anywhere from three to $500 per square foot. Wow. Yeah. So you're getting the services, but you're really paying for it. Once you're scaling your company a little more and you're really looking to establish employ a lot of employees, a lot of growth, it's important to have a space that represents your brand. So that's when we advise people to go into a short-term solution. So you're not locking into a 10-year deal where you're basically locked in and you carry that liability on your books for 10 years. Um, you really want to go to a situation where it's a short-term sublease. You know, it's a deal that generally subleases trade about 25 to 30% below the market. So you're getting the value there. And what it does is it allows you the flexibility to grow in a couple of years, but it also gives you the opportunity to have your own brand and have your own place to, to create that brand. Very cool. Yeah. It's interesting, like you basically like mapped out the last three years of Silverback Social. And it's crazy because you know, you don't think about it when, you, when you're an entrepreneur, you're just kind of like following your nose and saying, all right, I've got to start from home. Okay, I'll get into a co-working space now that I have employees, but now I need my own space. So the point of my saying that is I wish I knew you three years ago, like legitimately, no, no, I hear you. so I could sit down with you and say, all right, here's the trajectory of my company. What's your advice? How can anybody that's watching this get in touch with you guys, find the infographic, and maybe even have a conversation with one of your representatives? Because I would imagine, you know, you've got those four stages. There are a lot of people that are at each of those four stages mm -hmm. that can use some guidance, that yeah. can use a little bit like, you know, I'm not selling you, I'm just going to tell you how it is, and then in three years, come talk to us. Right? Yeah, no, right. and, that, and that's, where, that's really where we come into play. Uh, we're we're, we're long-term viewers. Um, you know, we, we understand that, that business doesn't happen on a, in a short cycle. Uh, we sure. understand that when you give people good advice, they understand where it's coming from. We're not in here for the, for the, the short term. You know, when I first joined Norman's company, uh, he, told me, he told me something. He said, it's, it's never about the commission. So seemingly doesn't make any sense for a real estate broker. Um, but what that lesson is, is that it's a long-term play. So that's what we do. So for people who want to reach me, you know, I can be found on Twitter. My, my handle is at NYC underscore SQFT. So Dig it. NYC, square NYC, feet. Yeah, square oh, feet. yeah. All right. Yeah, okay. Pretty, I pretty, see, pretty creative. I see what he did there. I see what he did there. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, you know, we're, we're more than happy to have conversations with people. You know, each, each, like you said, each company has a different trajectory and each company has a different has a different view. So really what's right for one is not right for the other. Sure. Um, and it really depends on, on your stages of, of funding and, and all that kind of thing. Let me ask you a quick question about 
tech in New York, um, what are some of the biggest trends that you're seeing in terms of the type of space that they're looking at? So the, the biggest trend now is what's called industrial chic. Ooh, so, fancy. So all, all the landlords are now basically demolishing their spaces and taking old loft buildings, hmm. old buildings that were factories, and they're polishing the concrete, they're exposing the ceiling, they're putting cool ductwork in, and that's from a, from a design standpoint, that's what everyone's really going for. A lot of glass offices, so that allows the light in. And the biggest trend that we're seeing are, is that people are moving away from the standard office look. They're moving away from heavy offices. They're, so yeah, what they cool. do is it's mostly open area, collaborative thinking, and then you have some breakout rooms for some yeah. private conversations. So I can like pick up my laptop, hang out with you for a little while, pick up my laptop, go exactly. talk to somebody else for a exactly. little while. Exactly. So that's good for two reasons. Number one, collaborative environment. It's fantastic. Sure. Number two, it's much more efficient from a space standpoint. Mm -hmm. And the prices that office space are at, the cost is tremendous. Yeah. So great. if you can squeeze more employees into the into the floor, it can be much more helpful. Much Without more having to give somebody an office, is, you know, the size of this room, right? Yeah. You I mean, I, I, as long as I still have my office. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No matter what, just want mine. That's <laughs> <laughs> no, but but that's really the trend that we're seeing, you know. And and you know, a lot of companies sometimes, if they're growing, they'll take a lot more space and say, "We'll fill it up, and then we'll grow into it." Um, that can be concerning sometimes, um, and that that's really on a case by case basis, which is why I advise people to sit down with me listen to what I have to say, because if you're really growing very quickly and you're at that phase four, which is having your own space with a long-term lease, you have to make sure that you have flexibility. Hmm. Expansion options, contraction options, termination options. You have to make sure that if some big piece of business comes your way and you all of a sudden you need to hire 50, 60, 100, 200 employees, fit them. you can fit yeah. them. And you don't have to worry about having another office downtown because you have a midtown office that can't afford, you exactly. know, can't expand appropriately. Exactly. It's fascinating stuff, man. Yeah. Well, listen. Thanks for stopping by to chat. Absolutely. We really Thanks appreciate your support here at the Westchester Digital Summit. Josh Berger, killing it. And Chris Desi. See you next year. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> awesome. <laughs>